Hello and welcome to Politics London. Coming up, more than two thirds of London's underground stations have no step free access. Are we treating people with disabilities like second class citizens? I honestly feel like within my lifetime I will never see step free access. Now, London has Europe's longest underground network, but only around 30% of stations have step-free access. The Mayor of London made a promise to make more tube stops accessible for wheelchair users. And yet it's now a year since work was due to be finished and most targets have been missed. Helen Drew explains. No, sometimes I'll just Jeff Harvey lives right by Walthamstow Central Station. I live about two minutes from here. But I can't use the underground station here on the Victoria line. He's got an appointment in Victoria today and we're travelling with him. Walthamstow Central doesn't have step-free access to the underground. Thank you, driver. So first, Jeff has to catch a bus to a station that does. Yeah, yeah, this morning I had to check up down London.com to make sure that the lift was working here and in Victoria for this trip. 45 minutes in and he can finally access an underground station, Tottenham Hale. This station has step-free access. All the way to his final destination. A journey that Transport for London's route planner says should take me 30 minutes has just taken us an hour and a quarter. Uh, that's pretty typical. We did pretty good today, but it, sometimes it takes longer depending on traffic, buses, lifts, all kinds of variables. And it uh, can be very frustrating. Of the 270 stations on London's underground, only 81 of them are step-free. The mayor had promised 12 would be added by last March, but a year past the deadline and only three are complete. Paralympian Sophie Christensen has long been campaigning for a more accessible underground. We filmed with her nine years ago, after she'd just won three equestrian gold medals at London 2012. We've just arrived at Paddington and instantly there's a problem. Fast forward to today and she says not enough has changed. I honestly feel like within my lifetime I will never see step free access. You know, I work in London, I pay my taxes, you know, and I'm still treated as a second-class citizen. Transport for London told us making more stations accessible is one of their top priorities. As for the delayed plans, they say due to the catastrophic impact of the pandemic and fall in passenger numbers on TfL's finances, not all step-free schemes that were planned can currently be progressed. Um, every time something, something becomes accessible, I'm quite excited about it. But it, it's taking too long, and many of the things that have been announced are cancelled or delayed, and it can be very disappointing. Politicians and CEOs and people capable of really putting this on the agenda just don't, don't realise what it's like to be disabled, to not be able to get around London. TfL says they do plan to make a further six tube stations step free this year. Some really powerful accounts there. Well, I'm joined by the Liberal Democrats, Deputy Chair of London Assembly Transport Committee, Caroline Pigeon. Caroline, good morning. Welcome to you. Good to have you on the programme. Just how many stations should and could be made step-free access each year? Currently, it averages around four. Yeah, well, we were supposed to have seen 12 stations um, by April last year, and that had been on the website at TfL until February. But, you know, the Mayor and TfL, in my view, are really falling short on what they've promised. In the mayor's 2018 transport strategy, he was very clear that we were looking at 40% of tube stations to have step-free access by 2022. We're going to be lucky to reach a third um, by the end of this year. But also, when you look at um, accessibility, it isn't just step-free access. 
During much of COVID, TfL has failed to provide physical guided assistance for disabled people on the transport network, despite every other private train company providing this across the country safely with appropriate disposable sleeves. This is really unacceptable and I think TfL needs to look closely at itself to work out why it is not delivering that service for all Londoners, including those with mobility issues. Well, what is going wrong here in your view? Well, I think there's something going on with, with staff at T TfL. I understand people are very nervous, but if the train companies can provide these services safely, then TfL needs to as well. But also but in also particular with, with not meeting these targets for step-free access. Well, there's clearly an issue about how much it costs to build um, a step-free access programme. Even under Boris Johnson, in his first two years as Mayor of London, he cancelled six step-free schemes including one at Shepherd's Bush, where they had already spent £39 million, and yet the scheme was cancelled. So we need to look at how we can do these schemes in a, in a more efficient way, in a more cost-effective way. But it's not a sort of either-or option. We have to make sure the transport network is fully accessible. We keep hearing TfL say that every journey matters. That's got to include people with mobility issues as well. OK, Sarah, every journey matters. Uh, one of the mayor's preferred slogans is also London is open, but it's not really truly open to London's disabled travellers, is it? Yeah, and I, thank you for doing this report. I think it's it's really important these things are are on the agenda and stay on the agenda. I think when, when the mayor um, came into post in, in 2016, about 25% um, uh, was was um, step-free access and he had a, a, a target to get us up, um, which, which, as Caroline says, we're not going to meet because there isn't the funding to do it. And we need to try and fix that and make sure we do have the funding, the, the collapse of income um, through But that's COVID. only been in the past year. Yeah. TfL wasn't meeting its targets for this before the past year. Well, the, 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 the £700 million that used to come to TfL from the government that now has gone um, has a huge impact as well. But we have to do these things. You're absolutely right. And we also have to learn the lessons from COVID. And I know that the TfL are engaging with lots of different organisations to try and um, make sure they can improve things. And it's not just about step-free access, of course, it's about all kinds of other things. I, w I would just say as well, in, in my neck of the woods, in, in Croydon, we've got two stations that we want to make um, accessible that aren't. One is um, owned by Network Rail, one's owned by Southern, it's uh, Norwood Junction and uh, South Croydon. And so we need to work with all those organisations as well because it's not just EFL that owns all of the infrastructure here. We need to make sure everybody is in investing in for Network Rail, that really important upgrade to Norwood Junction has been consulted on but we don't have the guarantee of the funding so we need government to step in there and guarantee the funding for that. Paul, Boris Johnson left Sadiq Khan with a pretty poor inheritance. He only delivered step-free access to 30 stations. So this is not a new issue. No, I think, you know, look, look we, the, undoubtedly COVID has um, co uh, created a big hole in TfL's finances, but there was one already there. So that's why government's stepping in to make sure that we can cost the cover, uh, cover the cost of COVID. But we're not going to cover the cost of Sadiq Khan, who had already uh, cancelled a lot of urgent uh, um, uh, road repairs. He's, uh, and then you look at the access to um, for, for disabled people onto public transport. If they can't go on the underground, they have to use other methods like taxis. And yet he's stopped um, access for taxis into places like Bishopsgate. He's lost a court case as a result of it. And this is something I've been pushing him to uh, reintroduce uh, over the last few months. It's a simple thing that he could have done, which would have increased um, disabled access at a stroke of a pen. Paul, for him. But, is there a wider yeah. issue here, though, about representation in politics, something we often talk about, and there just aren't enough disabled people in power to ensure that the needs of disabled people are met? Well, we clearly need to do a lot more for a, a 19th century traffic um, transport system like the, like the underground. There will be um, um, underground stations that are challenging, but we've got to make sure that we have the um, investment in our infrastructure, and that's why Sean Bailey's talking about setting up a London infrastructure bank which will help leverage private money as well as government money and as well as um, money from City Hall as well to, to hit these targets rather than just promising and making empty promises. OK, thank you. And Caroline Pigeon uh, from the London Assembly Transport Committee, thank you for your time this morning as well.